Hi everyone, welcome back to What's Up Doc. Today I've decided to do the first video that we're filming about the Hippocratic Oath. The Hippocratic Oath is a central, basic, fundamental in medicine. It was first developed by, or first written by Hippocrates, the famous Greek physician in around 400 BC, so 2,400 years ago. A very progressive document and quite incredible that all of these things were thought of and known at that time and all the more incredible that so many of them have actually transferred to modern day the oath itself is probably the earliest expression in the western world of medical ethics and so how uh, a doctor should behave with regards to his patient and actually with regards to himself or herself the reason I want to talk about the oath is because it is so present in every day as a doctor. Everything that we do, every decision that we make, every interaction that we have with patients, our thinking about how to treat a patient or how to diagnose a patient, uh, our boundaries with our patients, everything is in this oath in its most basic format. It determines how I'm going to interact with a patient, it determines what my limitations are, it makes me understand on a regular basis what I should be doing and what I shouldn't be doing. One of the most present thoughts that comes from the oath is this idea of first do no harm, which is not actually contained in the oath in those words, but it does appear in some form or another. Um, but the idea is that before we try to do good, we should first be thinking, how do we not harm the patient? So you have two treatments. This one uh, has these side effects. This one has those side effects. Um, how do we weigh things up? How do we do the minimum harm to the patient while trying to do good? Because everything that we do has risks. Everything that we do has potential side effects, interactions and implications and consequences for each patient. So I think that over time, as there's become more and more technology, the uh, idea of first doing no harm has become a little bit blurred. I think that we have a problem. I think that we are trying very often to meet the expectations of patients, uh, ideas that come up from the media. People think that we can do everything because we have so many great advancements in medicine. And so we, are more likely to jump to saying, oh, I've got this treatment that can help you. So there's this new drug that's come on the market, but this drug's only been out for three months, or it's only been out for one year. And actually some of the more concerning side effects may only be apparent to us after it's been on the market for three or four years. And then suddenly there's a big recollection of a drug because it turns out that this drug increases the chances of a very significant side effect which nobody had appreciated at an earlier stage. So I think we have to be really cautious. I think we have to be humble. I think that we have to think and think and think and reevaluate in every case. Um, and I think that this is a potential problem, of the big pitfall in medicine today. There are so many different treatments. There's so much competition for different treatments. And we have to be very much aware of this as physicians, making sure that our information is not just coming from, let's say, the uh, journal articles, whatever, but that we're seeing it and, and living it in front of our patients. It's a a very it. central part of the, um, of the oath and of med medical ethics is the idea of autonomy. Now, autonomy just means that uh, a person uh, is in a position to make decisions for their own health or for any decision, really. Um, but that they have the ability to do so and the right to do so for themselves. So as in the, in the patient-physician interaction, you've got the idea that the patient has autonomy. So if I say to a patient, I think you need this medication, the patient can weigh up the pros and cons, which I've got to give him all the information for, and then he will say to me, well, actually, I, I don't want this medication. I might be thinking, well, why wouldn't you want this medication? But the patient doesn't want the medication for their own reasons and I can explore them with them if they want or not but at the end of the day I have to respect his autonomy now conversely 
if he says to me, I want this treatment, well, I also have autonomy as a doctor and that's also a part of this. And I have to be, I, I shouldn't be doing any treatment that I don't feel comfortable with. Um, a classic example might be gynecologists performing medical abortions. Many gynecologists will do this, but there are some who feel like this is not what they feel comfortable with. It may be for cultural reasons, it may be for religious reasons, it may just be that they find it difficult from an emotional perspective, but they have the right to say, I don't want to do this, as long as they refer the patient on to somebody else who can do this. So it's not about taking away a treatment from a patient, but it's about acknowledging that in this specific relationship, the doctor has also got autonomy and that there can be a conflict here. So it's about how do we sort out this conflict. Another very important thing I'd like to talk about with the, uh, the Hippocratic Oath is the idea of confidentiality. The doctor-patient relationship is basically, it's, um, it, it's something akin to that of a priest and a, um, a member of a community. Everything that the uh, patient says is supposed to be sacred with the doctor. All information is supposed to be kept extremely uh, well secured. Um, uh, even something as apparently minor as if, uh, if I had a, a husband coming to see me this morning and he says to me, oh, oh, you'll be seeing my wife later this afternoon. I have to keep quiet. I can't sit there and say, oh yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll pass on your regards to her or, or anything. I have to act as though I don't know what he's talking about in this regard. And he needs to know that, that whether his wife's coming or not coming, I'm not able to give any such information. Confidentiality is so important because people trust us um, and that, that trust has to be um, put down in stone. It can't be something that can waver. There's only uh, probably two exceptions for when we should be being careful about um, uh, we need to rethink confidentiality is when someone is at risk of harming themselves or somebody else or if they're not in, they're in some kind of altered state of consciousness um, whether it be through uh, the use of drugs or a head injury or whatnot. We have, there are a couple of exceptions where we don't have to keep confidentiality in the interests of the patient or in the interests of wider society. There are many modern versions of the oath, of the oath that exist today and used in different medical schools around the world. There's uh, another aspect of the oath which I think is also very important and it's not in the original version from Hippocrates but there are modern versions as I said earlier and this is the idea that medicine is an art as well as a science so there are some versions like there's a version in the USA in uh, 1964 that talks about this and the importance of that is that we're all humans and our interactions matter so this is not about someone presenting with a specific symptom. They were saying, okay, I know what that symptom is, or I've worked out that it's not this, not this, not this, and it's probably this or this, and I have a specific drug and that's going to sort out that symptom, right? The whole idea is to really listen to the patient in the first place. And listening is in itself an art. There is a science to it, of course, but it's, it's very much about the uh, ability of the doctor to be warm, to be sympathetic, um, to have the basic understanding that listening well, examining well, speaking well, those are the things that can actually affect a cure. So there are countless examples of patients who have come into my room feeling ill and all I did was to listen very carefully, make sure that they didn't have a serious illness, make sure I address their concerns, what was going on at the back of their mind, what, what do they think that this pain was. Very often it's, it's something like cancer or heart disease or some uh, one of their neighbours recently dropped dead of a heart attack and they then thought, well, this chest pain or this pain in my left arm, it's probably a heart problem. And so my job as a doctor is to understand that. And this again comes to us not applying medicine solely as uh, science, because if I did, I would end up over-examining, over-treating, over-diagnosing, 
uh, and actually harming people. So this is very much there is an art to medicine. Now I want to bring in another point just about that is that when a person comes in to, to see a doctor, uh, and this again comes into a more modern version of the Hippocratic Oath, it's the job of the doctor to look at the patient and say, okay, yes, you've got this symptom and this symptom, and I need to treat those things, but I'm not just treating those symptoms or this disease. This disease is something that you have, it's not something that you are. So I need to look at you as a complete human being. I need to look at you as a human being in the context of your uh, family, in the context of your relationships, in the context of you being uh, a father or a mother or a son or a daughter um, and the responsibilities that you have, the life that you have around you, your job, how is this going to affect you um, and if I don't think about those things I'm not really fulfilling my complete responsibility to you. So a person has an illness let's say or uh, or a condition, but I have to treat that person in the context of everything else that's around okay. me. So in summary then, um, to come back to the main reason why I wanted to do this video is that I wanted to introduce to all of you this framework in which we have to think. And it, it's going to come up again and again when you see any of the other videos that we're going to uh, do on this channel. I want you to have this as one of the fundamental basics of how we are supposed to think about medicine, about um, our roles as physicians, our responsibilities to our patients, our responsibilities to ourselves in order to be good physicians for our patients. And I hope that this little summary and um, I, I hope this little summary will actually give you a clearer picture as to how we are supposed to be thinking in terms of the ethics of making a diagnosis, treatment and following up each of you if you have a medical condition. Do I think that medical ethics is taught enough to medical students and doctors? Uh, I, I certainly was taught it and I know that some people um, even take um, do, do uh, research in, in ethics and actually take particular courses in ethics. We certainly had an ethics course when I was at medical school. Um, and I think it's something also that's an evolving subject because as science develops and society develops, uh, medical ethics will play different roles in different situations as we get new technologies, if we're able to keep people alive um, or to bring to keep babies alive at younger ages if they come out of uh, if, they, if, if a woman gives birth at an earlier stage these bring on a whole bunch of ethical questions that we need to constantly address and there isn't one answer to all ethical problems obviously you've got a particular case of a particular person who we need to take in the context of that person in that life and we have to have these guiding principles and so yes I hope that what I've spoken about today gives some framework to that so that you can understand how we have to think as doctors on behalf of being responsible for you as patients. Anyway, I hope that this video was informative. I would love you to leave some comments in the comments boxes below to like anything that you find interesting and maybe you want to hear more about and also to comment about that. And I will see you again very soon.